What's going on guys, Vulcan here, and today we are back in Outriders with their massive new update called New Horizon. So I was invited to play this update a few weeks ago and it's been really hard to keep it under wraps until now because it's just, I'm so excited for the changes they've made, right? They're all such good changes and things that we have asked for for a long time. So I think you're all really going to enjoy this one. So let's talk about what Outriders changed and then I'll give some impressions of how impactful it is or what my understanding of it was during my play session. So first up is the biggest one. There are no more expedition timers. This was such music to my ears and I understand why they did it in the first place, right? You know, hardcore, sweaty, speed runs, but it just did not work out as intended. It actually ended up pushing people away from expeditions to the point where some people would just replay the story multiple times or they would go farm world farming spots because they did not like the timers within expeditions. And the game just became such a speed rush that it also killed build variety, right? And it forced players to play as glass cannons. And then at the end of it all, you might not even get any worthwhile loot. So it just was not a very good cycle. So honestly, guys, the timers, they had to go and gone they did. So what is the incentive for running expeditions now? Well, you still get an awesome chance at legendary loot. Plus, you can play whatever build you want since you don't need to be as fast as possible. That means if you want to play as a tank and your friend is a healer, you can. If you want to try out a brand new build and see if you can kind of tortoise your way to the end of it, go for it. The build variety will really open up, and I think that will give lots of players more reason to jump back in. Plus, we don't have to suffer the whole like Devastator kicking era again because... Now we don't have any timers. If you want to make a super tanky devastator that just absorbs all kinds of damage, then roll with it. So I'm very excited. And to help celebrate the look for new expeditions, we also have a couple of other things. So first up, we do have four brand new expeditions to play through, and these were insanely fun. We get to fight a spider boss again, like we did in the campaign right up in the big volcano. We got to travel through a detainment camp. We got to revisit some old ruins. We got to discover some old Pax sacred grounds. So there's really cool stuff that we get to go through here. And the awesome thing is that each of these new expeditions have Easter eggs in them and they're all different. So there's stuff that you need to go out and find. And if you find them, you get specific loot, special loot from going out and doing that. So for instance, one has like hidden skulls and another has this like red phone that you have to answer. If you answer the phone, you'll end up in a special room with brand new loot. And all of these Easter eggs, guys, they are not very easy to find. The skulls one particularly is very intense. They mentioned that after over 150 play testers, only one group managed to find all of the skulls during their play session. So that was three players out of 150 and that's just crazy to me and then our group when we ran through it we didn't find a single skull we didn't find a single one and i felt like i was like a csi tech the way we were combing that place for like details and data we just could not find one we broke all the pots we broke all the boxes we could we looked high we looked low and we could not find a single skull so i am very curious to see if any of you can find them within a first few runs i want to hear from you so let me know in the comment section below as well so I just mentioned that we had some cool new loot, right? You answer the red phone, you end up in a special room with brand new loot. So I don't want people to get too excited because these aren't new legendaries or anything like that, but they are new epic items that we can chase down and they look phenomenal. They have this really kind of like raw look to them. They remind me a lot of the migraine. And that also leads us to the second largest announcement of the day. And that is Transmog is here, let's go. Outriders have added a wardrobe system that allows you to wear any armor in the game, regardless of class, any armor. So if you wanna be a trickster and wear Technomancer set pieces, you, you can, you totally can. It's incredibly flexible except for one part, and that is you can't transmog a weapon to look like another weapon, like another weapon type. Like for instance, I can't take my pistol and make it look like a sniper rifle, for example. But at the end of the day, I mean, that's a small price to pay, right? You can make any double gun look like any other double gun, any pistol to any pistol. So there's just a lot going on there. And I think it is 
awesome. I mean, you're able to make your character look exactly how you want them to look. And this was one of the biggest asks that we had ahead of the game's release. And I'm really glad they went all in on there. Okay, so we do have a couple more changes outside of like the balancing and the patch notes. I did link those below. So if you want to go read how your favorite skill got balanced, whether it got nerfed or buffed, um, spoiler alert, there's a lot and there is a lot of buffs. So keep that in mind. So first up, Tiago, guys, remember our, our fan favorite Tiago, you know, the guy who lived in the jungle forever by himself. He has all the scars on him. And then at the end of the game, he is sitting in the camp with you and you could buy legendary loot from him. But remember, Tiago had one big problem. He never rotated his loot. He just sat there and once you bought what you wanted to buy from him, that was it. Tiago was basically useless. Well, Tiago is no longer useless. He decided, you know what? My customers want new stock. I need to have some new items to bring to my customers. And so now you can, you can buy random legendaries from him. You can refresh his inventory using drop pods. Now we messed with this in our early access a little bit. It was very simple, very easy to understand. And I ended up getting some pretty decent items from him. So I would say, do not sleep on Tiago. We can use him to help kind of off balance our bad luck if we ever run into any anymore. Because remember, they boosted legendary drops by 100% back in June. Now, the second one I wanna talk about, and this was a surprise to even me, right? I had a good long, like three and a half, four hour session of playing the new content, talking to the marketing team, talking to um, a couple of the developers, I believe, but they did a great job keeping this so close to their chest. They, they, they teased it a little bit, but I didn't realize they were announcing a new DLC coming in 2022 called World Slayer. So that was a surprise to even all the people who were in the testing crew. And this looks really interesting and I'm curious what all will come with it. But for now, I'm just glad to see that the game is actually continuing to build and expand its world. I really hope they keep this up. Whether we see another DLC following World Slayer, or if we get an announcement that Outriders 2 is coming. I don't know. I just know I want to be in this world more often because it's a fun game, right? Through all of its bugs, through all of its ups and its downs, its peaks and its valleys, it's still a fun game at its core. And they've made so many big adjustments to it that I think people are really going to enjoy where it's sitting right now. So folks, that is it for my time with the update. It was really fun. I had a great time. They asked us what classes we wanted. I said Technomancer because that's my favorite class. They ended up setting me up with a Blighted Rounds build and we kind of rolled through and did a whole bunch of stuff there. Um, I did tinker around with some of the other skills and things feel pretty good. You know, if you wanna go for the minigun build or an artillery shell type build, then you can do those things. And I think now without the expedition timers and without the stress of finishing things so quickly, you're able to really kind of look at what do I need to do to balance my survivability and my damage to just finish the expedition. And I think that is going to really help some of the people that liked the minigun builds, that liked the impaling forest builds. All of those things are going to be viable now, which I think is really, really cool. And also guys, um, shout out to Leroy Gaming for being my co-op buddy during the playtime. We didn't have a third, so it was me and him co-oping through there, blowing everything up ourselves. And it was a great time, good conversation. And I always love working with other content creators. So big shout out to him. He was a fantastic partner in crime for this one. So if you want to know all of the details packed into this massive update, check the link in the description below. Otherwise, let me know what you think of the update in the comment section below. But as always, this has been Vulcan, and I will talk to all of you next time.